Hi everyone. I am here today to provide a little update because I love to give updates. I love to share everything that I am going through on my journey with hopes that it is, you know, able to help someone else on their journey. It is helping someone else on their journey. So it's time for an update. So it is currently Tuesday, um, April 4th. And as of today, I am officially, well, not as of like today, meaning right now, um, but I am officially complete or I have officially completed my, um, all my rounds of the chemo pill called Zelota. And so if you've been following along, um, you know, so far throughout the whole journey, then you know that after I had my mastectomy, I had to do a chemo pill um, for what was originally scheduled to be six cycles. However, um, my doctor ended up adding on a seventh cycle. The regimen can be six or eight cycles. Um, they typically do six cycles is what I was told several times because I keep asking because I just want to know like why we doing seven instead of eight and you know why we did seven instead of six. And so um, they just, honestly, they don't really have an answer, meaning like the nurse practitioners, because I normally see the nurse practitioner for most of the visits. And I see the oncologist, um, more like every couple months. And so the nurse practitioner, you know, they, two of them have basically said like, well, you know, it's honestly was just Dr. Dr. Stevenson's call to, um, make the decision to add on a seventh cycle um, because most times they do six cycles. Um, they don't typically do eight for my case. And so back to what I was saying. So yeah, I just completed the seventh cycle. Again, if you've been following along, you kind of already knew that I was doing seven cycles instead of six um, with the last update. And so seven cycles instead of six. Uh, and I wanted to talk about the side effects of the Zelota because I've shared side effects through, you know, every, you know, phase of the treatment, um, what I experienced and, you know, all of that, what I was told I would experience and everything like that. And so for Zelota, cause I'm currently on or was currently on Zelota and Keytruda. Um, I had been on Keytruda prior to surgery, so I wasn't really expecting, you know, anything new with that. However, I do have some side effects from Keytruda as well. So I'll start with the Zelota. So the Zelota is a chemo pill that I would take um, for 14 days. And so I was taking, I can't remember how many milligrams of the medication I was taking, but anyway, I was taking three pills twice a day in the morning and in the evening uh, for 14 days straight. And then I would be off for a week so seven days off and then the you know next monday at the end of that you know week off then i would start a new cycle so again it was a total of seven cycles uh a cycle is three weeks and so i would take it for two weeks on one week off and then repeat for seven cycles and overall, I tolerated it well. The Zelota wasn't anything that made me sick. No nausea, no vomiting, um, nothing weird with my bowel movements or anything like that. So no diarrhea, no constipation, um, no GI upset, no GI upset at all, honestly. Um, I would usually say like outside of like the things that I'm going to show, you typically wouldn't have known that I was on a chemo pill. Like I didn't really interfere with, you know, my normal daily routine and things that I do. My side effects with the Zelota, um, one of the things that they mentioned was something called hand and foot syndrome. And so basically hand and foot syndrome is when you have extremely dry hands and feet, like extremely dry to the point where they crack and peel. Um, it can be very, very painful. Uh, they encourage lots of moisture, moisturize constantly. They even sent a moisturizer, which I shared in another video um, when I first started taking it. So uh, they, you know, this was something that was not uh, surprising in terms of um, having hand, dry hands and feet. 
um, because I kind of already had had dry hands and feet with the other regimen that I was on. So I was just like, oh, okay, great. More dry hands and feet. But I will say that with Zalota, it's a whole lot more drier than what I experienced on the other uh, regimen that I was on. And so my hands, I'm currently moisturized because I still, even though I am done with the chemo pill, it's still in my system. So I'm still needing to moisturize several, several, several times throughout the day. Like you can't just moisturize once a day and just be like, oh, that's enough. Like you have to do it several times throughout the day to kind of stay ahead of the potential effects of the extreme dry hands and feet. So um, they sent moisturizer. Uh, the moisturizer was a pretty good moisturizer, um, but I ended up coming up with my own secret uh, recipe of what worked for me. And so, like I said, they mentioned hand and foot syndrome um, to be mindful of that and to let them know if it you know, got to the point where I needed help with um, healing the cracked hands and feet. And so, you know, every time when I would go in, because every time I started a new cycle of Zalota, I would also go in for the Keytruda infusion. And so that would be an opportunity to speak with the, with the nurse practitioner where they would ask, you know, are you experiencing this? Are you experiencing that? And so the typical questions was always like, you know, any diarrhea, uh, constipation, nausea, vomiting, um, you know, anything like that. And so I'd be, you know, no, 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 no. And then they'd be like, you know, well, what, you know, any pain, things like that. I'm like, well, I got the constant pain in my feet from my joints, uh, which I've had so many weeks, so many months now. And so that's like no surprise to them. And then they'll ask about, you know, how are my hands and feet doing in terms of the dryness? And I'd explain like, you know, well, they're dry, but I'm not dealing with the cracked um, hands or feet. It's not peeling or anything like that. And so that went on pretty much through all the way through cycle six, honestly, like that my hands and my feet were dry, but I never had issues with them splitting or cracking or bleeding or anything like that. It wasn't until I did this seventh cycle that my hands and feet both had issues with um, the cracking, the splitting. And I will say it is extremely uncomfortable. Um, so my feet were like cracked and split. Um, I didn't even know what was going on. I just know like it was hurting and it felt like literally like razor blades on my feet. And so I kind of explained to my husband like, hey, can you look and see what's going on? Because my feet, like they really hurt bad. And so he looked and was like, oh yeah, they, they've they they've split, they, they're cracked. And so that's where the pain was coming from. And so kind of to give you an idea of how it would feel, it would feel like, think of like a paper cut, paper cut, um, or like, yeah, like, I mean, for lack of better examples of like a razor or something slicing your foot, like that's what it looks like. And that's what it felt like, like something cut me, um, but it wasn't anything that cut me. It was literally just dryness and dry to the point to where it did that. Now, I will say, I feel like I probably slacked off the like moisturizing of my hands and feet that I have been doing. Um and so maybe that like attributed to what I experienced this seven cycle compared to the other cycles. I felt like I may have been like more diligent uh, initially than I am than I was the seven cycle. But needless to say, never, nevertheless, like it still um, I still had the cracked feet, and then in the like the seat, like the the finger joints. So this is where it happened. I don't know if you can see it, but that's one area that uh, actually kind of split there. Let me pull back a little bit. So right in here. And so that's constantly where the dryness would be. Um, so on this finger, this finger is uncomfortable. Um, and it was the thumb, but they're feeling better because I'm, you know, moisturizing and treating it um, how it should be treated. Uh, same thing on this hand. Um, in addition to the dry hands and feet uh, is the skin discoloration, I've said before. Um, so my hands and my feet are literally almost the same shade as my face. Like they are super, super dark in pigmentation. Um, again, it's kind of hard to see if I don't have like another hand next to it to where you can compare it, but I'll include a photo 
of my hand against my baby's hand. Um, and you'll be able to like really see like, oh wow, yeah, the pigmentation is definitely off. And so that's how my hands look, they're dark. Um, they're not dry because I moisturize, but even like this side, if you look at here, my knuckles and here, how dark it is. Um, so yeah, I feel like at one point they may have been darker and they, and they feel like they're maybe lighting, lightening up a little bit. Even my dad kind of mentioned that it didn't seem like my hands were as dark as they were, um, when it initially happened, but Nevertheless, like I said, they're still, you know, dark. And just to give, give you an idea, like they're, you know, the pigmentation is almost similar to the rest of my body, which we all know, like your hands, <laughs> the palm of your hands, the sole of your feet are usually much, much lighter than, you know, the other parts of your body for African-Americans. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then I'll show you my feet. So, I gotta lean back on the bed. Woo! So, they're dry, as you can see. Um... That's the split right here that I was talking about. So it's healing, but even my feet are super dark. Look at the sole of my feet. That's a big foot in that camera. My, my foot is not that big, but <laughs> that's how dark the pigmentation is. Look at like the side and then look at that. Like it's literally almost the same color, but yeah, see the area that's healing. And so I moisturize my feet um, just as much as I moisturize my hands but they dry out more, they tend to dry out more. Um, same thing on this side, dry, 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 dark pigmentation, especially this part of my feet. Um, and then this one cracked as well, felt like razors. And so that's healing as well. This one even split on my toe. So even my toe felt like I was like cut. So yeah, this is terrible, y'all. But there's nothing you can do about it. It's literally the side effects of the medication. Like it's not anything that I'm doing wrong or anything like that. It's literally just a side effect. So that's what comes with it. Um, My nails on the bright side, The remember the nails were dark? So they have all grown out. All the fingernails are somewhat of a normal color now. This one has like this line down the middle. I don't know what that's about, but. But nevertheless, they're not black. Doesn't look like I have on black polish anymore on my nails. So that's the bright side um, of this time. It's just the palm of my hands and the palm of my feet that's dark and not necessarily the nails. Um, I don't remember if it has grown out of my toenails yet because um, I know that toenails grow slower. Um, I do have some polish on right now, so I don't really know. Uh, what can you do to treat it? So it's not encouraged that you go to the nail spa because um, it's not encouraged that you put it in hot, hot water. Um, and then you want to be careful from like, you know, having them scrape, scrape, scrape and you know, try to get all that deadness off and leave you with a raw foot, like that's gonna be painful as well. So that's not necessarily encouraged. What's encouraged is literally what I've been doing is like keep your hands and your feet moisturized. Um, I do have like a little, um, the little stone foot thing that I use at home just occasionally, um, maybe once a week, but I don't use it often because again, you don't wanna like be so um, obsessive about it that you scrape until that skin is raw because that's going to be painful as well. Um, but you know, it took a couple days and it feels better now, thankfully. So yeah, I wouldn't, would not recommend that, you know, you kind of obsess over it. Just moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Once you're done with the cycles at that point, you can schedule, um, an appointment to go to the nail spa and, you know, really get your feet treated or whatever. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend it right now because can you imagine having it split and then you're putting your foot in the foot tub where other people have put their, like that's that's a risk for infection. So you don't wanna deal with that. Just wear socks. Um, <laughs> I, have, I wear socks a lot more now than I have ever worn socks because I just decided that I'm just gonna cover my feet. Um, socks help to lock in the moisture. So yeah, just wear socks. 
Um, my oil that I recommend would be uh, castor oil. Um, it's, you know, like I said, I have my own mix that I've mixed up, but that base oil is castor oil. So that would be my, my tip for anyone that's out there that is looking for a way to help com combat the dryness on their hands and feet um, to keep it from splitting and cracking. Because again, I only experienced this on the seventh cycle. Like it was not even, it was a non-factor before. All right. Okay. So um, yeah, so that's that. So yeah, the dry hands, dry feet, that's all from the Zalota. And that was the biggest, sorry, the kids are being loud in the background. Um, so if y'all pick up on that background noise, my two-year-old and my 10-year-old are arguing right now. Stop arguing! The other medication that I'll highlight is the Keytruda. So again, like I said, I was taking the Keytruda on the first part of my treatment, you know, process. Uh, after I had surgery, they restarted Keytruda and I'm supposed to be on that for a total of nine cycles. I have currently finished the second, I mean the seventh cycle of that as well. Hey, Matea. I'm recording. Hey, I need you to go out because I'm recording. And close the door behind you. Oh, Thais did what? Okay. Okay. I'm recording. So y'all be good, okay? So, yeah. So the key to the... Tay, stop. Please, let me do this. Close the door behind you. Okay. Close the door. Okay, thank you. Bye. See you later. Love you. Close the door. Close the door. Hey, you wasting my video space. Bye. So the key true to, I didn't really experience any side effects with that initially. Um, but when I started taking it on the backside, since I've had surgery now, um, I will say like, I was not given like a steroid or anything with it. Like before, when I was taking all the chemo medication, they would give you a steroid, um, to kind of help you, you know, to prevent having like major reactions and stuff with it. Sure. That helped mask a lot of the side effects that I am experiencing now. And it's probably the reason why I didn't see it beforehand. And I see it now. Um, so with the Keytruda, the main side effect with that, that I have attributed to that because everybody else is saying like the Zalota doesn't cause that, um, is like this terrible rash. So I have a terrible rash in my private areas. Um, it's extremely itchy. Um, the skin is super dry. Um, and it's just a terrible place to have a rash. Like it's uncomfortable. I mean, so I like, they're, they're like, you know, it's not even like, a lot of people, I guess, are complaining about it. Maybe most people don't even say anything about it because every time I mention it, like they don't tell me <laughs> anything that I can do for it other than just some steroid cream, um, which does help. It does not clear it out completely, but it does help. So that's what I've been using to uh, treat that rash um, there. I've had it in other areas as well. Like this little scar here was a dry patch or some type of rash at some point that I was putting a steroid on. Um, but that cleared up. So that skin now feels completely normal. It's just a, you know, hyper pigmentation from where it was. Um, but the, like I said, the growing area is just, it's, it's extremely itch itchy and extremely uncomfortable. Um, and so if you don't use the cream, you will be in a position to where you want to scratch, scratch, scratch. And that's not a place that you want to be scratching, uh, especially in public. So um, definitely recommend a hydrocortisone type you know, ointment cream that you can apply to that region. If anybody else has this experience, um, don't see a lot of information out there about it right now, but it is what I experienced. And so if anybody else is on this combination of medication and treatments and they're like trying to figure out why, you know, they keep getting a rash down there, then it's more than likely because of that. And so, um, yeah, and so they kind of said like it's probably happen happening because you know it's an immunotherapy, so it 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 like sends signals to your body to do what it needs to do to fight like abnormal cells. 
And so one of the things that I had way before cancer I had as a kid was eczema. And so it's almost like a real bad uh, eczema flare up. Um, but again, in the private area, like never had like any type of experience with that before. So again, it's just uncomfortable, um, irritating, but nothing that the steroid ointment doesn't help get through. So that's a good thing. Um, what else can I say? Um, oh, I did notice like even back here. So this is where I had like eczema at, as a kid, my ears were like extremely dry and flaky and it was terrible like having to go through a childhood with dry flaky ears and going to school and stuff but eventually I outgrew it and I never had issues with it before or again but now since I've been doing the Keytruda I have noticed that like the dryness has come back um particularly behind my ear and so I've been having to apply the steroid ointment there as well in addition to like in my ear and stuff like that um the other thing oh this is major so my scalp so they said that the zelota should not cause hair loss which it has not um my hair has been growing but they did mention that it would probably slow down the growth of my hair and i do think that that is happening because we are about i guess maybe six or seven months since or probably seven months at least since um the chemo stopped and you know hair growth starting and you know, I don't have a lot of length. I have a, you know, a full head of hair, but it's not very long or anything. Hey, Matea, say hi. She look a hot mess, but she's here. <laughs> How you gonna come in on my camera? I am doing something. Get out my camera, girl. I love you. And so, look, she's growing up. <laughs> she's growing up so she just climbed in on the bed while i'm recording to jump in on this but anyway so yeah so didn't have any hair loss but my scalp is really dry so again that's probably either connected to the zelota or the keytruda and who knows at this point what it's connected to but it gets so dry no don't jump stop stop it gets so dry that i will have so um so yeah my scalp my scalp is it would get extremely dry um to where like it's like these patches of flakes it's i've never had like this before so it's one of the medications i don't even know which one it is but the flake patches they're so thick um that they can just like i can just comb up under it and they lift up and i can just lift them off of my scalp it's like the most disgusting thing ever that I've ever experienced in terms of like my hair and scalp and all of that. Um, it will even like leave my scalp feeling extremely raw and like, you know, I would experience like the skin weeping or whatever. So like it sores in my scalp. I've mentioned that to the nurse practitioner and they're all kind of like, oh, just try your dandruff shampoo and things like that. Well, things that are going to dry your hair out, especially black hair. Um, so not really keen on wanting to use that. They even called in the um, ketoconazole, ketoconazole um, shampoo, which I guess like would typically help with like dandruff type situations, but it's not helping. I've used it once and it's extremely drying for the hair. So I don't even feel comfortable using that anymore. Um, what I have done was result back to what I basically used on my baby scalps when they had cradle cap which is the Mustela Foam Shampoo, Cradle Cap, cradle cap Shampoo. Um, so again, Mustela Cradle Cap Shampoo. I use that on my babies when they had Cradle Cap. Not all of them had it, but those that did. Um, and it worked wonders. They did not lose their hair. It lifted the flakes out. Scalp was healthy, beautiful, thriving. And so that's what I've now um, started using on my scalp as well. And I think it helps a little bit. So I have not, oh, and I also, so the same cortisone cream that I have to use, you know, in the other areas, I'm also putting that on my scalp too. And that has been the only thing that has worked. Um, the other stuff, it just flaked right back up like nothing. Um, but the, the, the steroid cream, like I use it just like as a grease. And so I just like part my scalp and just, you know, rub it in or whatever. And it does wonders like so now i don't have like as thick of flakes in there like it's still dry and flaky but it's not as thick to where it like felt like things were just lifting up off of my scalp 
Um, so that has been it, that has been amazing with healing it. I have also um, incorporated like an aloe treatment on my scalp. So I just get an aloe leaf and just like, you know, squeeze out all the stuff. Just use a spoon to scrape out all the, 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 the gel from the aloe plant and apply that gel on my scalp. Um, as a treatment when I'm washing it and just kind of let it set in place because you know aloe has healing properties. So the aloe, the um, triamcinolone cream that that's prescribed for, you know, eczema, whatever the case may be. Um, I use that on the scalp. I use the aloe and then I use the Mustela cradle cap foam wash shampoo. And so those three combination of things have helped. Um, it's not gone completely, but it has kept it to where I don't feel like I have sores in my head. It was bad, y'all. Like, I probably will include pictures, but I honestly don't even want to because that's how bad it is. It, like, was disgusting. It makes my skin crawl to see that stuff come out my scalp like that. Um, and I'll just kind of show because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so see? See that dryness? And this is off of a fresh wash, but it's just like normal. It looks like normal dry scalp right now not necessarily sores and things like that so like as i feel through now i don't feel again any sores or nothing like that it just feels dry it's just dry which again oh look at that see dry and again this is off of a, a fresh wash so dry scalp major side effect um, outside of all the skin problems, like all of, I feel like all my major side effects has just been skin problems. Um, outside of that, um, short term memory, brain fog, uh, chemo brain, whatever you want to call it. I've definitely noticed a lot of that. I don't tend to remember a lot of short term details. Um, my kids have to repeat a lot. They get frustrated. Mom, we already told you that we already said that. And I just, I don't I'm like, well, tell me again. Cause I don't remember. So that's another thing. Um, what else? I've mentioned it to the nurse practitioner and they have recommended like, just like, um, brain activities like app. So yeah, it's just, it's hard to remember things. It's hard to keep up with things. Um, I'm so forgetful. The most, um, the most that it has affected me in the most hurtful way that it has affected me was most recently, my middle son was inducted into the beta club and like I knew like, okay, yes, that's supposed to take place at the spring break, the Tuesday at the spring break. He has this beta club ceremony, blah, 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 blah. Well, that day came and literally almost went and I did not remember. And I had picked him up from school that day or picked up my kids from school and one got in the car and I said, well, where's your brother? And he's like, I don't know. Maybe he went back to look for his ID because that has happened before he like loses his ID in school and he runs back to go get it. And so I'm like, oh, okay. So we waited, we waited, we waited and still, you know, no Micah. And so I'm trying to figure out like, well, what's going on? Maybe I missed like a communication where he's supposed to stay after school for something. And so I go through my email and like I find like the newsletter and that's when I discover that the beta club ceremony was that day and so i thought that i had time like i thought like it was literally like something that i would have to like rush home and change for because it was that afternoon and so as i pulled around to the front of the school to like you know because i'm still trying to figure out before i looked at the email i was trying to figure out where he was and so i had pulled around to the front so as i'm sitting there like you know reading the email he comes out to the car and i'm like hey micah you know how's your day blah 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 i'm like what took you so long and he's like oh i went back to get my pen and I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like, what pen? And it was his beta club pen. Like, that's when it hit me that I had missed his ceremony. And I was like, oh my God, Micah, when was the ceremony? And so he said it, that it was that morning. And like I said, I honestly like did not remember. And I never, never miss things like that. Like my kids will tell you, like, I am that parent that I am at every single award ceremony, every celebration. If I'm not there, it, I'm sick. You know what I'm saying? Like I am there. I have always been that mom that has been there for every game, every award ceremony, every achievement. Like I don't miss things like that. And I don't like to miss things like that. So as you can imagine, I was extremely frustrated with myself and just felt like, you know, I was so hurt because I felt like I let him down. 
he forgave me. He was absolutely okay. But me, I, I felt terrible. I'm feeling better about it now because obviously I know that I can't be everywhere all at once. However, it still wasn't fun. And so, yeah, the brain fog is terrible. So guys, write things down, write it down, take pictures, make notes, whatever you have to do, set reminders in your phone. I should have set it as a reminder in my phone and I didn't. Um, but yeah, set reminders in your phone because that brain fog, that chemo brain is, is real. And I don't want anybody else to have to experience what I went through. Like I cannot get that time back. Um, but I know that he'll have other major achievements, other ceremonies that I'll get to attend. And so I'm sure that, you know, as he grows up and becomes a young man that I'm sure he's not going to be looking back and be like, mama didn't come to my beta club ceremony. Like he's going to be, you know, blown away by all the other things that I attended. And so I know that it's not going to affect his future, um, in any foul way, but it's just like, as a mom, you just feel terrible missing those kind of things. Like, especially an achievement like that because he's so smart he's so gifted and i'm so proud of him so yeah brain fog sucks um i'm still having the hot flashes they're still just as bad i'm hot on and off all day all night still to this day um and so now that the zelota is gone um as it clears out my system i'm hoping that that kind of settles a little bit not necessarily that i'm looking forward to you know my female system waking back up because you know chemotherapy puts you in like a premature menopause and so everything is shut down not necessarily looking for everything to wake back up because don't want any slip ups and get pregnant um don't you know want to have to deal with aunt Flo and all of that but the hot flashes are terrible and they're terrible enough to where you kind of just want things to kind of level a little bit even if i never have you know fertility ever again at this point i think i'm totally at peace about that and i'm okay with moving on past that part um but the hot flashes are absolutely terrible so if it's some way i can like not necessarily be <laughs> in that menopausal state with the symptoms of menopause then i think i could be okay with not having another kid or whatever the case may be but yeah the hot flashes are terrible as i'm talking to you now i feel like it's like one about to come on so they have not changed they're still bad um what else the joint pain the joint pain in my feet and my knees that's still there uh knees not so bad feet just as bad as it's always been um i have not seen where that's getting any better yet so uh, hopefully hopefully as time passes that will go away um but yeah it still feels like when i get up out of the bed first thing in the morning it feels like i have worked a 12-hour shift because i used to work 12-hour shifts like i said before so i know what my, that type of foot pain feels like and so it still feels like that when i get up in the morning it feels like i've worked all night um and so my feet are very very sore um all the time so that's still there um my vision is a little more blurry than it has been i've been in contacts and glasses since high school so my vision has always kind of just been a little blurry then a little blurrier than your normal. Like I'm not 2022, I'm not 2020 vision without context. Um, however, since treatment, like my, like I can't see anything without context or glasses in. Like everything is blurry. Even things that are like right here in front of me seems blurry. So I'm hoping that that goes away. I've been trying to wait to have my eye exam because I don't want to like go in for the eye exam and then like things do get better and then I got to go back and change my prescription again. But I ran out of context and my glasses are now broke. So I am going in on Friday to have an eye exam done and just have to go with whatever, whatever they give me from there. I'll go with it. If it needs to be changed, I'll just have to figure that out on the backside. Um, yeah, everything's blurry. Um, last thing that I know is the like, so my like not necessarily like a lot of nasal drainage, but like my nose is like super irritated like i feel like in the morning time like it's super like stuffy and i gotta blow out like mucus and just it's like a thick almost like a sinus infection type um mucus plug um in the mornings and so that's been a constant thing not throughout the day not that it's stuffy and i can't smell or anything like that it's just really like overnight it's like everything kind of I don't know. I don't know. Like it's dry and mucus and just something. So that's, that's the other thing. So outside of that, I'm fine guys. So <laughs> I 
outside of all of that, everything is fine. Um, I feel like those symptoms, these side effects are small compared to some of the things that other people go through, especially like even on Zalota, I have known or I have seen videos or women sharing where they could not take it. Like they could not complete the full cycle of it. And so the fact that I was able to complete six cycles, getting a seven cycle, I'm extremely grateful of it. Um, the nurse practitioner said it like this. It was like the first six cycles are the main cycles and you did that. And so to have a seven cycle is just, you know, basically the icing on the cake. So I'm so grateful for that. Um, I'm so grateful even with the Keytruda hair, people have severe GI problems with that diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, constipation, none of that. So I am grateful. So again, even with everything that I shared and how terrible it sounds, how terrible my feet look, my feet <laughs> look like I walk on bricks every day. I don't care. I am so grateful that I'm able to get through these cycles, these medications and do what I need to do to get to a point where I never have to deal with this again. I never want to have to deal with a recurrence again. And so if all of this is what gets me to that point, I'm so grateful that I have been able to do it. And so anybody else that's going through this, if you're taking these medications, you having issues with it, man, my prayer is that you can get through it too. I pray that you can like, you know, not have to deal with all those things because the things that I'm dealing with, like I said, these things are so small compared to what other people go through. So if all I got to deal with is some dark hands and feet, dry, patchy scalp and dry hands, and, man, please, ain't nobody worried about that. So I'm good, y'all. I'm good on that. Um, and so I just wanted to share what it is that I was experiencing, but not trying to say like, oh my gosh, my life is falling apart because I'm experiencing that. And so again, you know, just wanted to get that out there just to kind of, you know, let somebody else know, like if y'all experiencing that too, hey, I experienced it too and I'm fine. So you'll get through it too. Um, as things get better, as my hands lighten up, my feet lighten up, I'll try to share videos about that too along the way. Again, no, like I'm good, y'all. I'm good and I'm so grateful. So guys, thank you for watching. Um, continue to like, comment, share. I appreciate all the support. And I will continue to update y'all along the way because that's what I do. All right. Peace. <laughs>